So this machine is a Optima XR240 AMX. It's a portable x-ray machine, and it's gonna take x-ray images of the sickest patients in the hospital. The president's executive order on maintaining American leadership in artificial intelligence made the case in February for increasing government focus and support promoting artificial intelligence technology. The AI algorithm was built by training it on thousands and thousands of images. In response, Intel Corporation published a 13-page white paper offering its recommendations on the topic. And that algorithm sits on the device. We wanted the technologists to instantly be able to see the AI result. How much critical attention does AI deserve? And so that's where we partnered with Intel and their Open Vino toolkit to optimize the speed at which the algorithms would run. Melvin Greer, the firm's senior principal engineer and chief data scientist, is here at Innovation Center to share his perspectives next on the webcast. Engaging our industry stakeholders to inform the U.S. federal government on today's most innovative IT solutions. The NITAC Community Action Groups present the following Solution Showcase. Welcome back to this edition of the webcast, and we are here with Melvin Greer, the Senior Principal Engineer and Chief Data Scientist of Intel. And so much focus now, Melvin, on artificial intelligence across the spectrum of the federal government. Why did you put forth the recommendations that you did? Todd, there is a race toward a digital future, both in terms of commercial and public sector organizations. And this race involves having all of these organizations look to a number of enabling technologies in order to make themselves more digital things like cloud computing, and blockchain, and as you mentioned, artificial intelligence. We have learned at Intel how to go about developing a strategy for AI. And we have a number of really great examples of where we've actually implemented. One of those is in social engineering uh, and social good for AI, where we're really using artificial intelligence to drive a better understanding of the opioid addiction. What are the costs? What are the possible remediations? And how we might go forward making real solutions for that. Our experience in developing a strategy for AI is the reason why we think it's important to have a US national strategy around AI. And the reason we put together this set of recommendations to help guide people. We want to share the mind share and the thought leadership that we have around developing an AI strategy, our experience across both public sector and commercial entities, and we think these recommendations are in line with what the federal government and the rest of organizations who are using AI ought to follow. I know your history, certainly your practice, is in the data and data scientists, and so much data has been collected and is available. And I'm just very curious about what that portends, what that uh, offers to the federal government, and what were some of these recommendations that you offered in the white paper? Well, the data is definitely the catalyst for AI. Without data, we can't use machine learning and we can't use artificial intelligence and cognitive computing and deep learning because data is what helps us train these algorithms to help drive better insight and lower cost. We found this to be the case in one of the examples we had for genomic research, where Intel is being able to use AI and the large data sets at uh, NIH and HHS to drive down the cost for immunotherapy and personalized and precision medicine. But for sure, without question, there's a lot of hype around the development and use of artificial intelligence. And so in order to cut through that hype, we came up with four major recommendations in our document. I would encourage everyone to get access to and download it from the internet. It is publicly available. I won't talk about all four of the recommendations, but let me just talk about just a couple. One is the ability to foster innovation and, and, and be able to drive the development of research. Now, in the, the most recent budget that the president has released, there's a more than $800 million allocation for AI research and unleashing the innovation that's embedded in that's AI. That's tremendous. Yeah, so this is something that's extremely exciting. And we think that this is just the tip of the iceberg as we look at agencies looking to harness the power of their data to drive better insight. We think that this is going to increase investment and then unleash the power of that data. 
Now, you released these recommendations, and uh, there, I was struck by not only the executive order, but also in your white paper, some of the, the, the cautions uh, and the impacts that uh, potentially artificial intelligence could incur upon society. I'm just wondering from your perspective, what are some of the implications, particularly um, social in the health and life sciences space? What will it mean? What, we're, what will AI be able to do and will do? Well, understanding the challenges is really part and parcel of understanding the entire strategy. And there are a couple of the recommendations that we made that are absolutely critical to entertain. First is the ability to understand the impact to the workforce. The federal government is looking to drive a more data-centric workforce. We already know that there's a lot of people who are focused on the potential negative impact of the workforce. But without question, if we take a look at technology in general, it's always had a meaningful uptick in the kinds of jobs and the number of jobs. So while we are going to focus in on some of the reskilling and upskilling in our recommendation, the idea and the net-net is that artificial intelligence will have a positive impact on jobs. Now, as it relates directly to health and life sciences, there are a number of key implications. And I'll use a use case or example to help drive home the point. We have this use case around imaging that we've done with, general, with GE. And GE Imaging and Intel have worked to help understand how to drive the cost of image processing down in health and life sciences and increase the accuracy. That, of course, requires more data around patient care, patients, hospitals, the development and distribution of care. And these all are part of another recommendation we made in the document, especially as it relates to the legal, societal, and ethical implications of organizing and aggregating all this data. We want to be absolutely clear. We want to be in a better position to use this data, but in a safe and responsible manner. It's definitely a balance, and I certainly want to thank you and thank Intel for taking this leadership in this evolving technology space. So thank you for joining us on the program here this morning, and uh, thank you for offering these recommendations to the U.S. federal government and to the U.S. population, Melvin. I appreciate it. Thanks, Todd, for having us. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the webcast. Feel free to download and review the recommendations that Melvin and Intel Corporation have shared with us. They're listed in the, uh, on the screen and uh, social media contacts below. For all of us associated with the webcast, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.